Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about a, um, a problem. A serious problem that affects a lot of people. Um, a buddy of mine had a piston, there's a hole burnt into it. And this is a piston that started to burn a hole through it. Right here you can see the, um, the damage done to it. started to molt the metal. Molten metal means turning metal into liquid. And then moving it, kind of like lava. And you can see what burnt around the piston. So I get a lot of, what causes that? Because you can't just throw a piston. If you get damage like that, you can't just throw a piston at it and forget about it. you got to find the problem. Clearly, there's a problem. Well, your problem is simple. It's a lean condition. Lean condition means you have excessive air going into the engine. See, your carburetor is set up to deliver to the engine... 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio, okay, which basically means 14 parts air here, 7 part fuel there, to 1 part going into the engine, okay, it mixes them together, there's your 1 part, okay, a lean condition could be anything over 14, so like you could have like 65, 7 to 1, that right there is a lean condition. So, how do I find it? What is it? I don't understand. I'm getting all these type of problems. It could be an intake leak. It could be a, um, a CLE, crankshaft seals. Where are my crankshaft seals? I don't even know what a crankshaft is. Okay, I'm going to help you with all that. That's what I'm here for, guys. Technical support. Okay, so. Slide you over like this. Okay, I'm going to grab my... My trusty old dummy block. I'm going to go over all this stuff with you guys tonight. Okay. This is an engine that I had previously taken apart. Um, I'm selecting this engine to show you guys something very important. That the engine, which is this side right here, over, this big hole right here, this big circle, that's your engine. This cavity right here, where my hand is in, that's your transmission. They are completely separate and in no way connected with other than the external gears. The one on the crankshaft and your clutch. Okay? That's the only way the transmission is connected to your engine. The engine oil you put in here does not, and I repeat, does not lubricate your engine. Your engine gets its oil through an oil tank. And over here, there would be an oil pump. Okay? For those of you who don't know what an oil pump looks like, that's an oil pump. Okay. Moving on. Back to the lean condition. So, we're going to start with the top. These are the, the uh, studs where your jug would, your cylinder would sit onto. Um, and your cylinder head. Okay? If your head gasket is... Oh, I'm going to stop from the beginning. If your spark plug is loose... See this gasket right here? It's got to have that gasket on it. If your spark plug is loose, that can cause a lean condition. If your cylinder head is loose, and the, or a head blown head gasket, that can cause a lean condition. If your cylinder is on, and the base gasket that holds your cylinder on is leaking, that can cause a lean condition. Having a Open air filter, no air filter in the box, just the box, can cause a lean condition. Your side cover being taken off can cause a lean condition. Your, remember I was telling you guys about all those grommets? If any of those are missing in the plug that goes on the front for your carburetor hole, where, where it would screw onto, that can cause a lean condition. If you have a, um... What do you call it there? If you are missing, there is a seal, not seal, a uh, filter, inside that little hole down bottom there. If that is opened up and you can see right to the ground or, you know, with a flashlight underneath. And if, like, if you can see, like, light, daylight, and the screen is missing, that can cause a lean condition. Lock can cause a lean condition, guys. If your carburetor screw, this one right here, the hole that clamps it on is not on tight 
that can cause a leaky condition. If you forget to put your seal and your carburetor in here, that can cause a leaky, uh, a, a lean condition. Back, put this back up here. Now, the crankshaft has actually, on these particular bikes, three crankshaft seals, not two. People think they have two, they have three. I'm going to show you what they are, where they are, okay? The first one is in back of your magneto. For those of you who don't know what a magneto is, that's a magneto. This fits right up in here, like that. The seal is in back of it, right there. That's your seal, that big circle. That's your first crankshaft seal. Let's take the crankshaft and put the crankshaft into the engine. So if it's through. Okay. Oh, one second. So I'm just gonna sit in here. Okay. Like so. Okay, no, just just playing around here. Okay, so your other crankshaft seal. You remove this plate right here, the clutch plate, or cover, I should say, clutch cover. Exposes all that stuff, and you're gonna see this. This is your intake. The other seal is on your intake. Okay. But notice how it doesn't fit on there tight. It should fit on there tight. And that's where this comes in. There's a sleeve. Okay. This sleeve actually goes into your crankshaft seal like so. Slides onto your crankshaft. Here's the third seal. This O-ring. Very overlooked. The O-ring goes on there. like so okay so if any one of those are leaking that right there can cause a lean condition typically you'll find that on an older bike that's been sitting around doing nothing for a very very long time now this seal that's around your intake doesn't really matter this right here is basically just for this for this cover right here to sandwich it in tight it basically holds it um, but this is bolted all the way around. Now I want to show you guys a very commonly overlooked seal that is not a crankshaft seal. It's actually an intake seal. On the back side of this, we flip this over. Now this right here is your intake. That little brass tube right there, that's your oil injection. So your oil pump sprays the, in the oil through that into your air fuel mixture. So your air, fuel, your air fuel comes through your carburetor, through the carburetor, through the intake, and gets the fuel and air as it's coming in gets sprayed with your oil. This cover, this big plate, houses your rotary valve, which is your intake. It blocks it off, opens it up. And then you can, uh, your air fuel goes in and then it closes it. And it comes around, starts the next stroke. And then when it needs to intake, oh, it starts to intake there and it goes all the way around until it closes again. Okay? There's a big giant O ring that goes right inside that groove. If that O ring is cracked, split, or worn out, that can cause a lean condition. All those things can contribute to a lean condition. Lean condition, basically, it's like a cutting torch. You're putting more air. A picture. Here's one. Let's try association here. Let's try a flame. You got a piece of paper burning. You gently blow on that piece of paper, on that flame. The flame gets bigger and bigger and bigger and brighter. Okay? That's what's happening on the top of the piston. The flame is getting bigger. The top of your piston starting to change to cherry red. It's starting to glow. As it's glowing, the metal is softening up. 
it's starting to molt. Molt means a liquid metal. And it's starting to move away from the hole. It's going to make a hole. Eventually, it's going to make a hole if it has that privilege. If not, it's going to do what this engine did. It molted. This is called a crown. It molted around the top ring. Got a little bit of the second ring. And what happened was the engine lost enough compression to shut down and can't run. The cylinder was wiped out. It was junk. And that right there was the, the cause. Too lean of a condition. So, basically you can tell a small leak from a big leak. Because a small leak will be like this. And a big leak will have a hole. So, how do you find the leak? That's, that's a good question right there. What could it be? I mean, do I throw, throw crankshaft seals in it and hope that's the problem? Well, let's take a walk backwards. Did I run the engine with no air filter? Did I run it with no side cover? If yes, then I'd replace those parts. Make sure you make sure you have an air filter in that box. Um, start off with the absolute basics, you know. Um, I always test my engines. That's how I can tell their integrity. What do I use to test them? I've got a couple of tools that I like to use. One in particular, and I, I absolutely love this. This is uh, from Husqvarna, and I use it. It's for chainsaws, but I use it on all two strokes. Like, what the heck is that? It looks like a catheter with a spark plug hole. <laughs> well, not quite. This right here, you can see it's got an O-ring on it, and this threads into your cylinder head. It's long like a piston stop and can be used as a piston stop. But it's designed to keep the piston down so that the ports are exposed. On this end, I pull, I hook my vacuum gauge up to it and I pull a vacuum. We'll say 15, 15 pound vacuum. Okay, we pull it. And then we watch it and see if it drops. If the vacuum drops to zero within, you know, two to three minutes, I've got a leak. If it stays at wherever I put it, plus or minus a couple pounds, you're allowed two pounds. Like, say you put it to 15 and it drops down to, say, 13. That's acceptable. So, anyway, I pull a vacuum on it and see if I have any seals. But I can't just pull a vacuum on it. I have to do one other thing. I have to seal up the intake and the exhaust ports. So, i got to take the exhaust off, seal the intake, seal the um, exhaust... Put this in the spark plug hole and pull a vacuum. Okay, see if it holds. Because if you don't plug your intake or your exhaust, you will never get a single pound out of it. It just, the vacuum will just be sucking air. So you want to plug your intake, take your carburetor off, plug your intake, plug the exhaust, plug this into your spark plug hole and pull a vacuum. They make a handheld vacuum pump. You just pump it up and there's a gauge on it and it'll do it that way. The other thing you can use is an automotive style. This is a leak down tester. So you hook your air compressor up to here and you have your, your um, regulator and you regulate it down and it's got a gauge. Now this gauge is set up for a four cycle engine that has valves and piston. I don't use that. Um, this goes to my, my compression gauge and it plugs right into the end. So you can disconnect it. It goes into the spark plug hole. So what I do is I set my regulator on my um, air compressor for two pounds. I put two pounds of air into it because that's more than enough. And then I wash the gauge on it. And it'll show me if, it's, if it loses the two pounds. Two to three pounds. You don't want to go over three pounds on these motors because you will blow a seal. Trust me, I've tried it. Um, and it sucked. So I go two pounds and I, I listen around the engine to see if I can hear a leak. Um, I might use uh, soapy water around the crankshaft seals, around the intake and cylinder head, and see if I see them. And don't forget, check your spark plug, see if the seal is leaking on that too. Um, that's how I check it. I basically just block everything up, pressure test it, and if it passes the pressure test... I know I got good seals. If it fails, well, then I got to find the leaky one, and that'll correct my 
um, which we call it the lean condition. So don't just throw a piston in it. Check to find the problem first, because if not, if you have this type of damage, you clearly have a massive problem that needs to be addressed. Now, can jetting cause a lean condition? Yes, it can. Um, if you rejet your carburetor and put a smaller jet in there, that right there can cause a lean condition. If you put a bigger jet in, that's going to cause a rich condition. And it'll probably run better. Or it'll run to the point where it's bogging and doesn't have throttle response because the jet is too big. Which is the problem with my Kawasaki KD80. I've got too big of a jet in there, i got to reduce it. So, and it has a hesitation in the bog. Also, too, check your heat range on your spark plug. Too hot of a heat range can also cause pre-detonation. Um, also, you might have the wrong fuel in there. You might have to increase your um, octane. Maybe your octane's bad. Um, that, those are some of the problems that happen. Also, too, if you have excess air in your oiler, that can cause a lean condition. It's not really so much to the point where it's going to burn a hole in the piston, but you'll notice the engine have burps of air. You want to check your tube that goes from your oil pump to your, um, what do you call it there, to your intake, and see if you're, if you're getting oil or air. So these things can all contribute to that. These are all problems that I have actually seen and dealt with and am dealing with. So... These are typical problems. So, because you want your engine to run as smooth as it possibly can. You don't want a lean condition. You want this right here. See how the thing's going around? You want that to keep going around. If it doesn't go around, the bike's no good. So, that, my friends... Is how you do it. So what did we learn tonight? We learned about lean conditions. We learned that the engine oil is separate from the crankshaft oil. The engine oil. Because it's not engine oil. It is transmission oil. That's why there's no filter on it. Um, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, how come it didn't have a filter? Because it's not engine oil. It's transmission oil. And basically gear lube. You know, it, it's oil. Motor oil. But pretending to be gear lube. So, definitely keep that stuff uh, in check. Whew. And this is pretty much it for the lean condition on the, um, the Kawasaki's, you know. If you have a bigger bike that has reed valves, same thing. You'd have to block off your reed valves and your exhaust. And you can pressure test them that way. Um, but detonation is not, a, not something to be overlooked by throwing another piston at it. I said this in the top end video. I did a video on top ends. And I want to show you guys one more time. On a um, on a piston. Whenever you get a piston. It's, this one says STD on it. That is not a venereal disease. That stands for standard. Okay. This is the exact piston size. That goes to a factory onboard engine. The arrow. Always faces your exhaust. Why is there an arrow? Because this. Um, wrist pin is offset okay and you want the thing to go like this if you put it the wrong way it'll be trying to do this push it straight down on it every time and you'll have problems you won't like them so a couple of things you're going to want to do when you put when you get your new piston when you put your rings on there is a little pin a locking pin you want to make sure that the pins Lock in. I don't know if you can see that or not. See if I can expand it. There is a pin. See the pin hole? Right there. See if I can find a better one on the other one. Where are you? Right there. You can see a little bit. See the circle? Right there. There's a pin in there, and it won't let the piston ring go past it, unless you go up over it. So make sure you get two of them set into place, and that's how that is. 
That is a standard piston, factory style piston. Looks aftermarket, but nevertheless. And um, what do you call it here? If you buy a Wiseco, which is what I run, here is a brand new piston right here. It shows you on the top of it. It gives you the part number. This is a 20 oversized piston, but they all have the arrows etched into them. So you'd have to look up that part number and write on, you know, write in the motor, you know, what it is. But this is oversized. This is 20 oversized. So this is, this is basically a 102. You know what I mean? Well, something going on my light here. So let's see. So yeah, there it is, a Wiseco piston with a nice crown on it. And it comes with new rings and all that stuff. New wrist pins, new clips. It doesn't come with wrist pin, but it comes with new clips. They used to put the piston um, size on top of them, like my KD80. That actually has a 10,000th hope size. Mm, we're tired. But that's pretty much it for that. So, um,. If you have an oddball number and it doesn't say STD on it, which is standard, it's an oversized piston. And you can't just throw an oversized piston. You have to have the, the engine machined for it. So that's pretty much it. If your cylinder is smooth and there's no deep gouges, do nothing. Wipe it down with soapy oil, uh, soapy water and um, let it dry and then it's a little bit and install it. If you got grooves, then you're going to have to have your cylinder re -nicosiled. You cannot hone these. There is a, um, a coating on the cylinder that is very, very strong, but you can't hone it. If you hone it, you'll take it off. So keep that in mind. So um, that's pretty much it for these things. If you have a cylinder like that oddball one I have that has a sleeve... Then you will have. To, then you can bore it or hone it if it's got a steel sleeve in it. What is a sleeve? Give it a pull one out. I showed you guys on the last um, video there that I did with this motor, but I will gladly show you again. Take it out right now because it's right next to me. A steel sleeve is is the cylinder itself. See how it's got the big thick ring around it. It's grooved in and it's pressed. They bore it way out and they press it in. And I'll show you compared to a factory one. A factory jug. There's a factory jug right there. You can see it's all one cast. In comparison to one that is not cast. See right there where they you can see where they cut the aluminum to fit that in. These these um Sleeves don't quite fit right. There's a few problems with them I found, like on the exhaust. You can't see it in the, in the light in here, it stinks, but there's a basically a wall right there. And the way it is, it cuts so far into the transfer porch, you actually lose power with them. So your best bet is the way, you know, how you have it. But you can bore those ones out. Not recommended, but you could do it. Or if you poured it before you put it in to match, that would probably be the best way to go. And they require different rings. When you buy a Wise Coat Piston um, for the KU100 factory, it they automatically assume you're using the factory Nicosile cylinder. If you put those rings on a cast iron cylinder, you will wear them out or steel. So keep that, that type of stuff in mind when you go in to do that type of stuff. You got to read up on it and do your research. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys for tonight. Um, as far as lean conditions go, what can cause them, what are the major problems. Basically, I went over the major stuff with you guys tonight. And, uh, and the, you know, the not so major stuff. Basically, all the possibilities for air to get in. And um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for tonight. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. 
If you have any questions or comments, by all means, please send them my way. Um, I hopefully this this video points you in the right direction, so you can it'll help you understand that you have a problem with your bike when your piston starts to burn a hole in the piston or burns a hole in the piston. That what to look for and where things are located and what the parts are called. So thank you guys for watching. 110 subscribers, guys. Thank you. You guys are blowing my mind here. I love you guys. You're awesome. So thank you for watching. And I hope these videos are very informative. And I hope they help you um, with your projects or your bikes. Get them up on the road. And, um, you know, I'm just really honored to be able to help you guys out with these things. 28 years experience. And these are what these are some of the things I found. And um, basically I went over the complete engine sealing kit you can't seal this thing any more than i already have um right here in front of you tonight so any of those things can cause a lean condition and um you know basically just take your time look over things if you have questions please send them to me i would love to answer them for you i have no problem answering from you uh, answering for you um during the day i work during the day i'm home at night so it's easier for me to answer text or um, what you would call it there or, you know, respond. Um, and I live in New England, so I'm Eastern Standard Time um, for you people who live over in the Philippines and and different um, different countries like the UK. Um, thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. I love you guys. It's awesome. I'm glad I can help you guys halfway across the world. I love that. Um, for the women on here, there's a lot of, um, I'm up to like 9% women. Thank you for watching. Welcome. Um, for everybody else, thank you again. Welcome. And um, hopefully we can uh, continue with this and keep it going on the uh, on these bikes. You can see my green frame over there. Right next to my Christmas tree. Is she pretty, guys? Ladies? So, I've got a few more things I have to do to the frame. But that's pretty much it. We're going to do a uh, KX100 nose on it. Um, but we'll get into that in another video. So that's all I have for you guys for tonight. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, share my page. Like my page. Um, and just thank you guys for all that you guys do. All the questions, your comments, and your support. I love you guys. Thank you.